we have some beautiful guests who will honor us with their beautiful knowledge and poetic depth. And our topic of discussion today is none other than the beautiful man that we all know that has had such a beautiful impact on all our lives, Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi. So I'm not going to go into a life biography about Rumi, but we all know his deep insight on humanity. It's timeless. He has left such a powerful mark on humanity that he's now, as we know, for the last few decades, the fastest selling poet in the West. Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, some claim him, the Iranians claim him, the <coughs> Afghanis claim him, the Turks claim him, the Europeans are now claiming him, but I guess everyone can claim him in whichever way or form they feel like. What I want to do, inshallah, is start off the show like we start off all our events and our gatherings with the beautiful word of Allah the beautiful, glorious words of the Qur'an. But we will recite verses that will be related to this program, inshallah, and to what Rumi has said about the Qur'an and his deep insights regarding the word, the letter, the dot, inshallah. My two guests, we will introduce them soon after that. We are absolutely honored to have both of them here with us, inshallah. We will recite these few verses. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله Yes, yes. All the way from California. 
is very well known across the world as a respected community leader. Lectures in Nantuk, Kenya. He's got a beautiful bookshop in the Bay Area in California. And uh, it's interesting that he started learning Lumi's poems since the age of five. Since the age of five, he started diving deep into Rumi and other great poets. So he eventually developed this passion and a calling which continued to call people in the most beautiful way, to call people to love, to beauty, to harmony, through the beautiful literature of not only Rumi, but all the other poets. And we know he's spoken and addressed audiences in all parts of the world. You see, what's interesting about this gentleman is that his uh, love for the language, his uh, fluency in the Farsi language is what's interesting. And this is why we also got Jennifer on the, on the show later, because uh, she's a linguist. Uh, and this is why I invited her to be on the show. But just getting back to our beloved uh, teacher, uh, Ferudun Mujaddadi. You see, it's interesting that he spends his time reading and diving deep so that he may share his deep insights with us. Honored to have uh, him here with us today, inshallah. So without any further ado, I'd love to introduce our beloved teacher. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sidi Hassan? I'm May Allah well. bless you, thank I'm, you. I'm just excited. Inviting. MashaAllah, you know? <laughs> MashaAllah. You, you, you're a very positive person a sanguine that uh you know it's, it's good to be around people who are always positive and, and and happy and this is why this is why we are here to be happy from the inside the the ruh and the, the soul and the, and the heart they're, they're always happy if they're connected to god and connected to the truth and connected to the hereafter uh, it's the body that gets depressed when it's uh, it goes in the midst of the world and expecting things and then it gets uh, uh civil strive and it gets pandemic and it gets all these then the body gets really agitated and, and weak and sick and depressed but the ruh the the spirit and the heart they're always in the same state they don't the state of the they don't it doesn't change it's, it's always they're always young they're always happy because their connection with the divine first of all thank you yeah for inviting me on, on, the, on the blank canvas uh but before we start i have i have a little story to tell people and that story starts, uh, goes back uh, about um, two decades ago, to be exact. Um, well, I opened a shop uh, called Rumi Bookstore. And, and then after a while, I got a call from some random guy from somewhere in the world. I don't know where he was from. And then he says, Salam Alaikum, I looked at your, your Rumi Bookstore, your website. Uh, I would like to design your website. I said, man, there's telemarketing people. Like, what's wrong with them? They call from all around the world. And then um, Mary said, I said, no, thank you. I appreciate that. And then he was a Muslim. He said, no, so I really want to do it. I love Maulana Rumi and I'm a web designer and, and your website basically is horrible. I can make it really nice. Uh, so I said, okay, so how much? He said, nothing for free. I said, okay, there's got to be something. He goes, no, no, no. I love Rumi. I want to do this for free. So he did my website for free. Um, his name was Hassan Rasul. I think it's the same guy that we're talking now. But that's how it all started and, and then uh, I did send him a gift. I don't know if he ever got it or not, but uh, um, this, is, this is called, uh, this is real love. And that's why how people get connected without any ulterior motive. And I think that Rumi's message is that, that you just do it for the sake of love. Like you live your life for the sake of love. So just wanted to get that out of the way for, for Hassan and, and what he has done. Now just for the community, he's just a lover, so. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh, uh, I'd like to start off by maybe uh, asking you a quick question. You know, what's our fascination with the, with the dot, with the letter, with the word? I mean, our closest, uh, you know, love uh, letter, if you like, is the Quran. We, we, I mean, it's, it's indescribable how much we, we are, yeah. you know, in love with it. But tell us, what's yeah. the fascination with the dot, with the letter, with the beauty? The intricacy of the yeah. word. Yeah, it, it's the mystery of creation is the dot. See, in, in the Arabic alphabet, uh, the first letter is, is ba in reality because alif is not a letter, it's hamza, right? So it, 
So alif is the hamza. So in reality, the first letter becomes the ba. And the ba is start with a dot under it. And this is the secret of all of Quran is in the letter ba, right? Which is like a boat shape with a dot under it. And the reason why the secret is there, because the, the commentator of the Quran, they say all of the Quran is inside Surah Al-Fatiha, the, the opening chapter. And this is, this is unanimous by everybody. Fakhruddin al-Razi said that, uh, Abdullah Ansari said that, like even the spiritual masters and, and, uh, and those who uh, were on the, on the path of, of just knowledge alone, they, everybody, esoteric, esoteric, all the um, scholars said the same thing. And they say all of the uh, Surah Al-Fatiha is in the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the, in the name of the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, right? And that's what everything starts uh, with with uh, with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, then all of the uh, all of the Bismillah Rahman Rahim is in the best when you say bis, Bismillah, and then all of the Bismillah is in the Bism, and the Bism is in the letter Ba. So in reality, the entire Quran is in the letter Ba, right? But they say, including from Ja'far al-Sadiq, said that the letter Ba is in the dot underneath it. That the mystery of, of, of all of Quran is inside this dot. This is why said, Ali said, Ana taht al -ba. I am the dot under the Ba. And Ali is, radiallahu anhu, karamallahu wajuh, he is the wisest. He is known as, as the wise man of the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, amongst the four noble virtues that the, that the four great Sahaba embody. Uh, Abu Bakr was the bravest, Omar was the just, and Uthman had the temperance, he was Iffa, uh, Ibn Affan, and then Ali was the wise, the Hakim, uh, he had the hikmah, the wisdom. And Ali said, I'm the dot under the, uh, the, the Ba. And the dot, it also represents the point of singularity, where everything came from, right? This is now, they say it's the Big Bang, whatever they say, but when Allah said, kun fayakun, it, you know, just they all came. So the obsession with the dot within the, the uh, Sufi tradition has been really uh, amazing. Uh, but if you look at one of the biggest criticisms that Mawlana Rumi gets is why didn't he start his, or the, his book, the Masnavi, when he claims that this is the Persian Quran. In other words, this is, a this is literally a commentary on the Quran in Persian. That's, that's what, you know, Abdurrahman Jami, the great... Uh, uh, saint and, and poet and, and, and master who's called the seal of the saints Khatm uh, al-Awliya he said uh, that Masnawi, Ma'nawi, Mawlawi has Quran that is about a Pahlawi he said the Masnawi of Mawlana Jalaluddin al-Rumi it is a Quran in, in Persian and it is a translation it's a commentary on the Quran in, in, in Farsi language and that's why in, in, uh, in our tradition the, the Masnavi is, is, is not just looked at as a book of poetry. It's really honored and respected uh, because of the 3,000 references to the Quran and to the Hadith in the, in, in the Masnavi. Uh, that, that there's so many commentaries on, on the Quran and Hadith. But Mawlana Rumi doesn't start his book with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim And when there's a Hadith that the Prophet wasallam said, whatever it starts, and it doesn't have Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim it is cut off from the Barakah, from the blessings of God. So why doesn't he, when he's a scholar, an alim, a, a person who knows these, uh, obviously, if he know it, he doesn't know that hadith. If you look at the Quran, all of the Quran, except one surah starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim right? And that is the surah, uh, chapter 9, right? Chapter 9 of the Quran, surah 9, doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim And there's a reason why it doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim because there's wisdom. Everything, there's wisdom in it. This is the, the Surah At-Tawbah, right? But uh, what does Allah start with? Bara'atun. Min Allahi wa Rasuli. With the letter Ba. Because the Ba has the Bismillah in it. It is a subtle Bismillah Rahman Rahim in there. And Mawlana Rumi took that poetic license. We call it English poetic license. In Arabic they say, Yajuzul al-Sha'ir ma'la yajuzul al sha'ir. That which is permissible for the poet, that's not permissible for other than poets. So poets, they can do things that other people can't, right? They can praise themselves. They can say, oh, look at, you know, Saadi said, Hamaguyan, Wadi, Goftay, Saadi, Digaras. Everybody tells poetry, but man, Saadi's poetry is at another level, right? They can praise themselves and boast about their poetry. It's poetic license. 
they can do it. Uh, it doesn't look good if you're writing a, uh, a prose. You're writing prose, that doesn't, it, it, it's not permissible. So now, Maulana Rumi started his book with Bishno. Now, there's a mystery in Bishno. Bishno is a command, listen. It's not, would you like to listen? Not, I recommend for you to listen, but no, a command. And there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is his certainty. He was so certain about this message that I'm not going to lead you astray. I'm not going to take you to the fire. I'm not going to take you to your egos and desires. I'm going to lead you to your heart. And that's where you're going to see the light of God. And I know the GPS to the light of God, which is inside your own heart. And I'm going to unravel all of you. And it's hard. This is why people in the, in the path of Mona and Rumi, it's difficult. It is difficult to go and remove these things. Some people get sick from the smell of their own stench, you know, because it's, it is who we are. We, we go through life and we, make, we sin and sin and disobedience have a, have a scent, has a, has a bad scent, right? That actually makes the angels, they can, they can, they can uh, smell the scent of, of, of sins. So Rumi, it started with Bishnu, a commanding imperative, listen. What does he start with? With the letter Ba. So he does have the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, but in a subtle poetic way. He has the letter Ba, and that's what he starts his book with. Now, what is he telling to Vishnu to what? Listen to what? Listen to what you just read. What does the Quran start with? Iqra, read. Rumi is saying, listen to what he is reading. Listen to what he is reading. And this is the 18 lines of the Masnavi. Mawlana Rumi in the Muslim, he wrote only 18 lines. He wrote himself with a pen and paper, 18 lines. That's it. Everything else, he just said it. He was inspired and he was saying these words. And this student, you know, Faridun, uh, one of them, I share a name with him. So I all, always like to mention his name first. Everybody knows Chalabi. Uh, but Faridun Zarkoub, the, the, um, he was the goldsmith. Uh, uh, Salahuddin is his middle name. And there's many poems in the Masnavi that, that he mentioned uh, Salahuddin by name. And there's many poems that he mentioned his other student, uh, Hishamuddin Chalabi. Um, as a matter of fact, almost every chapter starts with the first few lines has Hishamuddin Chalabi in there, um, uh, except the first chapter of the Masnavi. But anyways, they start writing things down. The last line of the, of the 18 line, he says, Pasukhan kuta wabayad wassalam. He said, let me make this long story short for you peace be in peace live in peace and spread peace how do you do that the way you do it if you read right if you listen if you listen to what he the prophet is reading vishnu to the iqra you will do salam you will get to peace and this is the the uh the gps to the station of peace. And once you get to that station, that's when you experience love. That's when you experience the light of God. Because as long as you're perturbed, as long as you're agitated, right? Rumi said, Garbahar Nakshe to Purki Neshevi. Pas Kujobi Segal Oi Neshevi. You said, if you get irritated with every rub, how do you expect to be polished? But if you're irritated and if you're agitated, we will never reach the station of peace. And if you're not at this, in, in, in peace and at ease, then you won't be able to see love, even if it's right in front of you, which is right in front of you. And most people miss love because they're agitated. They're always looking for something else. So that's the, that, that's the message of this is why Ba is important because the, the, all of the things that we mentioned but the, the essential message of Rumi in here is to listen to what the Prophet is reading, which is the Quran, and then it will take you to the station of peace. Salam. On, 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 that, on, that, on that note of, uh, of the Ba, I'd like to, uh, I can't help myself, but I have to recite Bismillah again. Just Bismillah, that Ba. It's such a be beautiful, ba beautiful letter. Uh, what I've read uh, recently in one of the tafasir of the, the, the exegesis of the Quran is that the alif is, it stands tall for Allah, you know, and the ba is, is the humble one. We are the, we are the ones that are humble. 
below the uh, leaf, if you like. And you can see it's, uh, as you said, it's on its belly, you know, it's low. Uh, and we should remain that way. Just does something, just doesn't. I would love to bring uh, to Jennifer in also just to recite Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. I will unmute you. Okay. And then just Bismillah and we'll hear the okay. from you as well. Inshallah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. And how would, how would Minshawi recite uh, Bismillah? Or even uh, Shahat? Bismillah. How would, how would Mancha, because the different reciters recite the Bismillah in different ways. Yeah, that was more, I guess that was more of the Basset style. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Mancha, we would uh, recite more like Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And getting back to our beloved uh, speaker, Ferudun Mujaddadi. It's an honor once again uh, to have you on the blank canvas. I'd like to ask you now, I mean, in relation to, you have to tell us a story. Maybe something about the moon, or Ramadan, I don't know. It's something that Rumi has given us. Please, over to you. MashaAllah. Um, there are, obviously, uh, people know that the Masnavi of Maulana Rumi is a book of stories, and uh, over 500 stories in the, in the Masnavi. Some are one-liners. Three, he has an entire story line in two lines and three lines. And some goes up to 700 lines. Obviously, uh, one of the longest uh, stories in the Masnavi is the story of the parrot and the merchant, uh, the Indian parrot. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, even when I memorized it to teach at the, uh, the Rahla in Konya, it, it was over 100 lines. All the you know people forget like all the fiqh rulings ruling but stories is, is always remain uh with us and that's the, one of the reasons why he told there's many reasons why he told stories um and obviously the gentleness from Maulana rumi because you hear stories from who from the, from your khala your aunt right your amma your maternal, maternal uh grandmothers they're the one that tells you story and puts you to sleep when you're young you know but Maulana rumi has that gentleness that he told me but his stories doesn't put you to sleep it awakens you, but it doesn't awaken you to go shout on the street. It awakens your heart to go in a state of silence because Rumi said, listen to, listen to the silence because it has a lot to teach you. So uh, there are many stories, but one of the stories that comes to mind is about, about moon sighting. And, and, I, and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, uh, he said, Moharuzagash dar Ahde Omar they said the month of Ramadan came. So Maulana Rumi, one of the beauty of it, it sets up the entire story in the first line. So you're clear about what's going on. So he brings the characters and he does the setup. The, the time is the month of Ramadan. It's coming. It's the month is coming. So it's the, the night of Ramadan. So they, he said they went on top of the mountain. So the setting is in this mountain place. So it's a high place. The month is Ramadan. So this both symbolizes sacred and beauty. Because the month of Ramadan is a sacred and beautiful month. And they're going on a mountain, which the, uh, it's, it's honored in, our, in the mountain. And then so they're on a high elevation. So this is awesome for those who study room balloon. So, and then he said, they run, right? They run. They didn't walk. And that's another symbolism. It's, it's called joy. Like when you see your beloved, you're not going to walk to your beloved. If, if, you, if, if your spouse has been traveling and, you're, and she comes back from a trip, you're going to run when you see her. You're going to run to your children when you see them. You're going to run to your parents when you see them. You're going to run to the people that you love, right? They're running. 
to see the moon because they love Ramadan. Ramadan is from the Quran. Quran is from Allah. These are all the connections that they have. It's the heart and the soul that's running. So they're running to the uh, uh, to the mountain. Uh, so it's uh, it is at Ahd of Omar. It is the time of Omar ibn Khattab is the Khalifa. He's the ruler the Amir of the believers. This is the time, this, the, the place and the time, the setting. So Sayyidina Omar goes with another, uh, with a few people that go with him to see um, the new moon. Tahilali Rosa Giran fall on Yaki go. Ay Omar, inak hilal. They went to see the moon just to take a good omen. Is, is it Ramadan? Is it Ramadan tomorrow? And this one man said, Oh, Omar ibn Khattab, oh, Amir al Mu'minin, here, here's the moon, right here. I see, I see the new moon. Shun Omar bar Osman Mahra Nadi. Gov Kimah as Khiali to the moon. Sayyidina Omar looked at the, moon, the sky and he didn't see the moon. And he was bewildered. And he said, Now, this, this must be your imagination, this moon. Because he said, Warnaman bin Ataram Aflakra. Shunnimi binam Hilale Pakra. But I have better eyesight than you. Like the older you get, the less vision you have. So he's an old man. All grayed up. They say, no, Omar is still, he's not old. He's younger than him. And he said, but I'm way younger than you. And I have better vision than you. And I can see the flock, the heavens. Right? But I don't see the moon. How is it that you see the moon? Now, also this story uh, is, is narrated in other places about Shurayh al-Qadi. But here, Mawlana Rumi brings these two characters and it's perfect characters, amazing character. Go of Tarkun Dastar Abru Bemo. Say Dama now, he doesn't, one of the beauty of Mawlana Rumi, he brings the most just person in the story and then shows his justice and rap with mercy. Because that's his message is mercy, peace, and problem solving. Rumi is a problem solver. Rumi is a problem solver. You can, it's, it's, I have, you read the Masnavi, you see issue, solution. Issue, solution. But all of the solutions are so beautiful and gentle. It's just absolutely amazing. So now we come to look at the solution that Mawlana brings through Omar al Khattab, the man who was symbol of justice, right? The people used to shiver when he used to walk in the, on the streets of Medina in Mecca. So he said, go tarkun dastubar abrubamor. He said, why don't you make your finger Put your saliva on your finger and then put it over your eyebrows. Right? One gahan to darnigar sui hilal. One gahan to darnigar sui hilal. They said, do this, wet your uh, fingers with your saliva, put it over your eyebrows, then look at this moon. I want you to find that moon again. So when the man, he, he made his uh, uh, fingers wet with the saliva and then wiped over his eyebrows, he looked, he said, the moon is not there. There's no moon. What happened? He said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the, the, uh, the, the moon disappeared. The moon disappeared from the sky. And then, and then <laughs> he said, Goft Ari, Mui Abu should come on and look at look at this this wisdom of of uh, of Maulana Rumi. He said, "Indeed, it was the hair from your eyebrow, because he had gray hair." He said, "The hair on your eyebrow turned itself into a bow. It curved. It became crooked." And it curved and it turned itself into a bow. So it to Afghan Tiri as Guman. And it threw an arrow of doubt into your heart, an arrow of imagination into your heart. And that's why you thought you saw the moon. Right? Chunyaki Mukashur. Ura Rahzad. Rumi said, he said, look at this poor man. One hair became crooked and it took him out of the path. 
Tawbah Da'wi Lafadi the Mahza to the degree that he said, I saw the moon with one hair that was curved, that became crooked. It took him out of the path to the degree that he said, I saw the moon. This is, look at this wisdom that Mawlana Rumi. Mui kaj chun pardai gardun buad. Chun hama ajzat kaj shod chun buad. If one hair makes you imagine a moon in the sky, if one hair can become a curtain that you can't see reality, what would happen if every limb of your body is crooked like that hair? It is not straight with God. What would happen when every limb of your body is crooked? This is what happened with one hair that this man claimed he saw a moon the size of the earth. This is what he's claiming. What would happen if your hands are crooked, if your eyes are crooked, if your ears are, if your heart, imagine that. Rumi is trying to teach us a lesson by showing the minimum, the minimum, the, 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 the smallest thing, and then telling us, look at this. What if this happened? Because he is so beautiful, he doesn't want to tell you, oh, you're doing all these medicines, you're doing all this haram. No, he's saying, look what happened with a little thing. What if you do the big things? What if you do the kaba'it? What would happen to you? Will you be able to see the truth? Will you be able to see, see the truth? Rost kun ajzat ra az rastan. Oh, my friend, become straight. Make your limbs straight. Sarmakas ay rost ru zam rastan. Become straight. And don't go on this path of wickedness. Ham tarazura tarazur rost ka. This is one of my favorite. Uh, lines uh, of uh, metaphors of Rumi, uh, one of my tired metaphors. Ham tarazu ra tarazu rast kaad, tarazu ra tarazu kaast kaad. They said, look at the scale. You know, now a lot of people, they don't know what a scale is. You know, like if, if you look at the picture of the, of, in the court, they have the, the blind woman and then link the scale with the two side. That's the scale he's talking about, right? The balance. He's on. So the scale, is said this scale, he said the scale makes it heavy and it makes it light. Who's doing it? It's the scale doing it. What he taught us in this, in this little story are many things, but one thing. How did Sayyidina Omar make the man straight? What did he do? Did he bring internal forces to the enforcer and said, hey man, do this. Fix his eyebrow, cut his eyebrow. No, he used his own saliva. He said, use your own finger. Use your own saliva. What is our saliva? It's inside of us. He made the man take an internal journey to himself. That was the spiritual lesson. And then all of those imagination just disappeared. Rumi said that with one desire to know you, all my other desire melted away because before that I had a thousand desires. But with one desire to know you, everything melted away. And when he took him inward and he used his own saliva and wiped over, and this is empowering people that you can do it. You can do it. What do you need? You need sohba. You need companionship. Sayyidina Omar was a companion. A beautiful, and this is why then he said, listen, don't go out of the path. Keep the companionship of good people, right? They will always empower you to do good because you have the power to remove, to remove the moon, the phony moons, right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu famous, Allahumma al haqqa Ya Allah, show me the truth in its true form. In other words, I don't want to see a moon and it's my hair. Yeah, what is Zukni Ittiba'a and give me the ability to follow it. And show me falsehood in its true in its true form that I know it's falsehood. What is Zukni Ittinaba? And give me the ability to, to run away from it, to stay away from it. Now, here's, here's the secret to this. 
and 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 I'll end this this thing with with this few lines that just came to my mind. Rumi says in another place. He said, "Dusare angustro barchashme." He said, "Let's exercise. Put the two tip of two fingers on your eyes." Hassan, go ahead and do that. Just put it for a second. Uh, and, uh, our beloved sister Jennifer, do that. Put the two tip of your fingers on your eyes. Hech bini in jahan in softly. Do you see anything of the world? Be fair. Ruby said, just be fair. Do you see anything of the world? Right? Really, we don't. Now, remove the fingers. Garnabini in jahan ma'dus. If you're not seeing, that doesn't mean that this world doesn't exist. If you're not seeing, it is not the fault of the world. It doesn't mean that this, the, the non-existence. Aib juz angusta nafsa shu means that the deficiency, the problem is nothing except the finger of your own nafs, your desires. These are the fingers of desire. Zoom is saying, if you put the two tip of your fingers on your eyes, you can't see this universe, this world. Unbelievable. I mean, if I what about there, if yeah. you put the fingers of your nafs? Wow. The fingers of the nafs that it would blind you. He said, my friend, remove the fingers from your eyes. Remove the fingers from your eyes. Then wonder and see at whatever you please. It is then, it is then when we remove the fingers of the nafs, the desires, the egos, when we remove it, that everywhere we look, Chishni Rahmatullah Alayhi said, Baharchi Minegam. Just Khodaw Nemi Binam. And everything that I look, I see nothing except the hand of providence. I see the light of God everywhere. That's what you become. But it is the nafs, the ego, the desire that blocks it like the two tip of your fingers. You know, um, thank you for that. I mean, really, uh, it's got me so emotional there because I have lots of non Muslim friends that are really dear to me. You know, they're really dear to me. And, and some of them don't believe. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in an afterlife. You know, and you know, when you were talking about, about just closing your eyes, you can't see anything. And when you, you know, it's like a veil. I'm a twin, you see. And I was in my mother's womb with, with my brother, right? And while we were in this womb, it's the same way I, I always think, and I always try and share this, is that, if someone had to come and, and, and speak to us as a little baby within the womb and say, hey, do you know what? There's a whole world out there. It's not just this, this world that you know as the womb. You know, there's, there's, there's yeah. buildings, there's cars, there's fish, there's trees, there's, there's so many beautiful things. You might think, mm, not really. I mean, I'm content with this little world. Little do we know that there is another world out there. And we have to trust that there is another world after life. And I also always use this uh, concept about autumn, when the trees die right before your eyes. It's desolate land that comes alive in the spring. There are the signs over and over. Can we not see? Can we not see? And I only, I only hope and I pray that that my beloved friends can remove a little bit of that, that blindfold and peep into this grandeur of creation and uh, what's to come, inshallah. I'd like to bring uh, Jennifer in here because Jennifer is uh, a good friend of mine and we become uh, friends through the Quran. So, uh, I mean, it's an honor to have you back on the show, Jennifer. Thank uh, you. You're very welcome. And the reason I, I invited you back on is because I know you, you're an American and mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think a lot of uh, your fans and people that follow you are, are quite almost flabbergasted that you <laughs> have no Arab roots, if you like, mm -hmm. and you've managed to, you know, 
grasp the Arabic language and other languages. So there's clearly a gift that you have for, for language and uh, we want to celebrate that. That's what the blank canvas is all about, is recognizing extraordinary individuals and applying to the canvas of life so others can marvel, if you like, um, at, at these uh, great gifted people. And you, Jennifer, uh, I'd like to also maybe just bring up your, your bio just briefly for, uh, out of respect uh, for people to, to delve into that. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know Jennifer, you know, I'm not going to go into the details, but please follow her. This is uh, where you can get more information about Jennifer. And what she's very well known for, she's uh, been on uh, very famous talent uh, competitions. And uh, uh, I think uh, more importantly now, she's, uh, she's, she's setting trends with the Quran and her voice and the recitation of the beautiful Quran. But I'm not going to go too much into that because of time. <coughs> Jennifer, please, what are you sharing with us today? Um, thank you. Just uh, thank you so much for what you shared. But I just wanted to say that you've said so many profound things and I'm in, you know, good company, alhamdulillah. And honestly, I'm not any kind of an expert on Rumi. I just love his, his poetry. Um, I think most people actually love his poetry. But I guess uh, I've recently rediscovered him and I have a book of, of his and I, I go back to it constantly. Um, and I'm going to share a poem in, and I'm going to attempt to read it in Farsi. So I really hope it's going to be okay. It was just something that was shared with me and uh, I thought it definitely related to our circumstances right now. So here it goes. <clears throat> Bismillah. A poem of the Hajraftic Ojoid, Kojoid. Mashur Hamil Jost, Bioid, Bioid. Mashur at Oham Sawyer, Vodivar, a bedivar. Dar bod Yasar Gashti Shuma, Darche Havoid. Garsura to be sure at a mashur, baby need. Ham Hoji, Voham Hon, Voham Kabe Shumoid. ده بار از آن را به دن خانه برفتید یک بار از این خانه بر این بام براوید آن خانه لطیف است نشانهاش بگفتید از خوجه آن خانه نشانی بنمایید یک دسته گل کو اگران باغ بدیدید یک گوهر جن کو اگر از بحر خدایید با این همه آن رنج شما گنج شما باد افسوس که برگنج شما پرده شما اید. So, um, now I'm going to read it in English so everybody watching can understand. O oh, people who have gone on the Hajj pilgrimage, where are you? Where are you? The beloved is right here. Come back, come back. Your beloved is your next door neighbor, wall to wall. Why are you wandering in Arabian deserts? If you take a really good look at your beloved's faceless face, you will get to see that the Master, the Holy House, and the Kaaba are all in reality you. You've already journeyed ten times on the path of Hajj to visit the Holy House. For once in your life, also climb up to the roof of your own house. That holy house is indeed magnificent. You've already talked about its many wonders. But from the master of that house, did you even get its correct address? Where is your flower bouquet if you've seen that divine garden? Where is your soul's pearly essence if you now belong to the Lord's divine ocean? Well, in spite of it all, may all of your sufferings turn into your treasures. Alas, you're always veiling your own treasures. So that's it. <laughs> um, I hope you guys I'll, that was enjoyed lovely. it. That yeah. Was, that was lovely. I just want to bring in uh, Feridun uh, to uh, give us some more insight into the beautiful poem that you read. Uh, first of all, um, beautifully read. Uh, both in Farsi and in English. Uh, Thank you. May Allah bless you and protect you and increase you. And uh, 
special love for Maulana Rumi and, and, and bring that teaching of uh, love, peace, coexistence into your heart. And, and this is one of, uh, one of my favorite poems uh, from the Diwana Shams. And uh, um, it's, uh, again, it's all symbolism. This mm-hmm. poem symbolism. It's, you know, what, what Maulana Rumi is talking about is, I call me Bahajrafta Kujoi Kujoi. He said, you know, he, he's like wondering. He said, you know, he re, when, repetition in poetry is just when you're completely embezzled, like completely, like what's going on? What's going on? Like people. So he's seeing these caravans that are, that, that are going, going to Hajj and he's saying, where are you going? And what he's trying to teach in here is that how are you going to see God when you go to Hajj? How are you going to see him if you haven't polished your heart? Because you mm-hmm. can't see it with the eye. With the eye, you can see the house. But with the heart, you can see the owner of the house. And that's what he wants him to say. Come back here. Polish your heart. Make yourself a mirror. So when you go to Hajj, you can actually see the meaning of the house. Not just the form, not just the black cube, but the meaning that it represents. Because everything in reality has meanings. Ibn al-Habib in the Diwan, he says, he says, إِنَّ مَلْكَوْنُ مَعَانٍ قَائِمَةٌ بِالسُّورِ كُلُّ مَنْ يُدْرِكُ هَذَا كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِبَرِ He said, everything in God's creation, there are meanings set up in images. And the one who can see the meaning through the images, they are the people of discernment. They are the people who got it. That's what you got life. If you see the meaning and the form. This is why Rumi in the famous line, he said, He said, see the rose and the thorn. Because once it blooms, everybody sees it. For us, what it means, the spiritual meaning of that is, you know, what do people say in the grave? Yeah, what, you know, what, what, what Ar-Rahman said was true. What God was saying was true. What the prophets were saying was true. That they would see the meaning in the grave. And Rumi said, no. He said, you have to wake and see the meaning before that. And this is why, see the meaning of Hajj. See the meaning of the house. Don't go there. People, you know, he's trying to make people pure. So they're worthy of entering the valley of Hajj. You have to be worthy of it. So how are you going to go and see? You're going to go look at the black cube and come back and say, I got the title of Haji? Is that, is that, what, is that what, what the journey has become? Let me say, no, no, no. Come back here. Come back. And you can get the reward of Hajj if you just... Have you ever gone to the roof yet? Which is symbolism to see the reality of Allah's creation. You've been all within your own nafs in ego and desire. You with passion all your life. Feed yourself and fed your desires. If you haven't gone to the roof, you haven't seen your own soul. You haven't seen your own heart yet. How do you expect to see anything in that valley, in the desert of Arabian desert? You're not going to see anything. It's not the roomies against Hajj. Now, there's a, uh, and I'll end with the story. There's a story from Attar Nishapuri, uh, one of the great poets uh, who Rumi met when he was 12 years old. And Rumi gave, and uh, Attar Nishapuri gave him the, uh, a book uh, of Asrar Nama, which is the book of mysteries to Rumi. He gave him as a gift. He was a great poet. He wrote the Mantiq uh, al Conference of the Birds, which is translated in English. Uh, amazing poet. Left behind 114 books. But Attar has a story about a, about a man who's going to Hajj from Baghdad. And they, get the caravan and they go and, and he has a son and, and he says goodbye. He says, the son says, he's like 10, 12 years old. And he says, Baba, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to Baytullah. I'm going to the house of Allah. And the son is so excited. Fitra and 30. He goes, you go to Baytullah, to the house of Allah? I want to go. Uh, he said, no, 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 no. This, this roads are tough and they used to travel by donkeys and by camels and uh, many people died on the way to Hajj. They never made it to Hajj because it was really difficult getting there. Um, so he says, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not, you can't go. Uh, and he said, no, he started crying. He said, no, no, I want to go to the house of Allah. I want to go to the house of Allah. I want to go to the house of Allah. I want to go. I want to go to the house of God. I want to see the house of God. Take me to the house of God. So finally the caravan people said, listen, just take the boy. Look at him. He has so much zolk, so much desire for, to see the, to, to go to the hajj. Let's, let's take him with us. We'll take care of him. We'll help you. 
So he says, okay, so he, he hops on, on the camel and they go. So they go, they enter Mecca, they, they get on the haram at the, at the miqat and they, they labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharif, labbaik. So they, they're doing the talbiyah and they enter the haram. They enter the haram, they go and they stand in front of the Kaaba and they're all making dua, they're all crying and, and they stayed, you know, people who have gone to Hajj and Umrah, they know it's just a very emotional scene when you see the Kaaba for the first time. And this boy just standing there without any emotion. And then he just taps on it to his father. He goes, where's, where's the house of Allah? Where's Bayt Allah? And he says, that, that's the house right there. He said, yeah, okay, so where's Allah? And he says, what? He said, so where's God? And the father says, um, no, no, son. This is the house of God. That doesn't mean that God is there, like in the house. Like it's... So he's trying to explain to the boy. And the boy looks at him. He said, so you brought me here to an empty house? And, and then he looks at the heaven and he shouts and he falls and he dies in the lap of his father. So they bury, bury him in Jannat al in Mecca. And that night his father has a dream. And he has a dream that he hears this voice of truth. And the voice says to him, he said, you came for the house, you're with the house. He came for us, here with us. And that's what Rumi wants to do to people. He wants them to become pure. So when they go to the house, they actually see the light of God. Not just the house. Because the house, everybody sees. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for that. You see, this is what words should do. You know, even conversations. Conversations should move us. Not just uh, these you know, fancy lectures once in a while, but even just little stories like this move our hearts. And I think it's a testimony to the, to the writer. When you write with good intent, when you speak with good intent, they say what comes from the heart enters the heart. Why do you think I'm doing We do the show. Is this it's not a show? This is here to paint beautiful strokes on the world. Even if one person is affected by this, then our job is done. We can't sit at home and do nothing. You know, people are complaining in quarantine, they bored. I, I'd like to flip that. We're not bored, we're blind. Getting back to the point. We blind to, we can't see the blessings in all this. You know, Jennifer, how do you see um, the quarantine, the lockup? I mean, I just want to unmute you there for a second. Um, can you share mm -hmm. some of the blessings that you see in this? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's all in the, the poetry of Rumi. It's... Um, we're being now forced to look inward. And I mean, that's one of the, the reasons I chose this poem was because, um, I mean, I know it's, it's talking mostly figuratively, um, but we can also take it in some way literally at this time, like we're literally confined in our houses. So why can't we turn our own houses into that house of worship? I mean, the Hajj pilgrimage can also be a metaphor for like all other outward acts of worship and all the ritualistic things that we do, but is our heart really in it? And um, I actually did have some like specific lines I wanted to, to talk about. Uh, I mean, this is why I appreciate the Sufi approach because it's constantly getting back to the intention and the sincerity. It's constantly saying, okay, like, yes, give your zakat, but like before you give your zakat, ask yourself, like, why am I giving this zakat? Am I connected to my heart? Um, at the end where he says, where is your flower bouquet? Where is the pearly essence of your soul? So in other words, like, where is the beauty of what you're doing? Where is the beauty with, within you? And, um, the, the last verse in the poem actually reminds me of another Rumi quote where he says, um, so the last verse, sorry, is, may all your sufferings turn into your treasures. Alas, you're always veiling your own treasures. Mm -hmm. um, this reminds me of when Rumi says, 
um, the wound is where the light enters you. So, and this also goes back to what Mr. Mojadedi was saying earlier about how it's not a pleasant process always to kind of open up our hearts and look within us and, you know, do the work, bring out all the emotional baggage, bring out all of the trauma, bring out all of our past and just like literally put it in front of us and look at it and, and, and recognize it for what it is and then let it go. And I mean, that's, that's the way to, to purification and people put different names on it. People put different processes on it, but um, speaking of processes, we need to get back to being able to enjoy the process um, and not always look at the results. I think that that's where I bring my like um, artistic viewpoint into my religious practices in a way because um, you know, and we're not always looking at the the end point when we're when we're like learning something, learning a new you know song to perform or learning a a verse of the Quran recited in a beautiful way. Like it's it's not it's the process itself is the enjoyment and the love, and the process itself is what brings the transformation. True. If that makes sense, so. I think it that's what does. people need to be focused on now in quarantine is just completely looking inward. Okay, thank you very much for that, mm -hmm. Jennifer. Our time is pretty much uh, up. I just want to, I've got two questions that have come, come through. Just want to load them here. And then the first question is from Paul, I believe. It's just loading. Can you explain the whirling dervishes and its validity in Islam? Okay, that's an interesting one. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to dwell upon this, but I think I'll pass this over to, uh, to Feridun. Could you kindly just tap on that? I mean, yeah. What's the validity of the whirling dervishes in Islam? It, uh, you know, it's an art. Uh, and uh, just like we go and, and we go to uh, a show and... and see something beautiful uh it, it's just an art it's not uh it's not part foundational to creed or islamic belief or something like that it mm -hmm. actually started by yeah. by maulana rumi's son he he didn't do oh, this in a formal know. type of thing uh his son started it because his son uh sultan walad was he was uh, he was worried that his father would be forgotten so he started the wording dervishes he started the maulawi tariqa all that because my, people are going to forget about my father. Had somebody told him, listen, your father is going to be New York Times bestseller in 2007 in America, then he would have kind of relaxed at that time. But uh, people, you know, they get worried that maybe people will forget about my, my dad. He was a great man. He was a genius. Uh, so he started some of these stuff that actually is attributed to Maulana Rumi, but it's not. Uh, 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 Maulana Rumi was very universal man, and, and he was a very dignified man. And I'm not saying that the world dervishes are undignified. It's a beautiful. I've witnessed it. I had a, an opportunity to witness it at the museum of, uh, of Maulana Rumi, uh, uh, the, right at Maghrib time, live. Uh, it was just it was mind blowing uh, to witness that because it's it's about nafs. It's taking you from the different stations of nafs until you get to the nafs al uh, to this uh, pure nafs uh, ego. So from from the leaving all of the desire of the world. So that's how they, they turn and then the master. Anyways, it's an, as an art, I don't have any issue with it, but it's not an Islamic thing where you say, yeah, it's part of Islamic aqidah or beliefs. Okay, thank you very much for that. I believe we have another question from someone in London. I'll just bring that up as well. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We do everything with the name of Bismillah. And that is, might someone read or recite a Rumi poem that could relate to the world and our mind state at present? And that's from Debbie Eklund. Um, yeah, I think uh, on that note, to conclude the the show, um, I mean, I won't uh, recite the whole poem, I'll just recite a few uh, verses of that. And perhaps before I recite a few verses of that uh, poem about the reed, you know, the reed bed, perhaps uh, Feridun, uh, Ustad, if you can tell us more about that particular poem and then we'll end with uh, me reciting that poem, inshallah. Yeah. Yes, 
So the the read bed is uh, is the first eighteen lines of the of Rumi's uh, book called the Masnavi. Uh, when he opened, it's the first chapter in the first eighteen lines. That's what he wrote himself, and he actually gave it to uh, his student Chalabi because they were asking for orig- original ideas. He used to read all these old Persian uh, texts like uh, you know Attar and Nizami, uh, you know ninth and tenth, eleventh century uh, poets. Uh, until they really wanted to get original ideas from his head because they knew he was amazing. But Rumi's humility and just being, just memorizing and reading the poets of the past, uh, that, that's what all the great people do. Um, so then he, one day he took it out from his turban and he just gave a pa- piece of paper. And these are all symbolism, obviously, uh, the turban and w- w- the head and the intellect and giving that uh, piece of paper and uh, to to his student so then after that he started reciting all of those lines and the student wrote it but anyways he starts with bishnawa's nay chun hikayat mi konad az judai ha shikayat mi konad kas nayastan ta mara bubrida and dar nafiram mard o zan nalida and sina khaham sharha sharha asfiraq ta biguyam sharh dard ishtiyaq هر کسی کو دور ماند از اصل خیش باز جوید روزگار و اصل خیش Anyway, it continues, but the, I'll just do a little uh, commentary on the first four lines and then you can read the English for, for the 18 lines and whatever lines you want. Uh, we, we, we've been doing this with some of my uh, uh, students uh, over the internet. I think we are a year two right now uh, that we haven't finished the 18 lines. So it just... Uh, Every, every line, we spend hours on it, uh, the, literally going back and forth. So in any case, he says, listen to the reed. And the reed symbolizes the perfect human being, al-insan al-kamer, the, perf- the, the human being that's completed and perfected himself from egos, from desire, because reed has nothing in the outside, right? The, it, it, they have to just polish it, right? And it didn't get agitated with polishing. And then everything from the inside has to be removed, everything from the inside. So it's hollow from the inside, no spiritual diseases of the heart, and no external diseases. Like, you know, we don't have any arrogance, you don't show, you know, no oppression, no, you know, no bullying, none of those. You're humble, you're beautiful outwardly, and you're, and you're beautiful inwardly because you're, you, you don't have any arrogance, you don't have envy, you don't have any of those diseases either. And then the holes are the experience of life. So you have to just go through life in order for you to sound good. And the inspiration comes, Rumi said, one side is in my mouth, the other side is in the heaven. In other words, these things are all inspiration. I'm not just telling you stuff from my stomach, just, you know, whatever I, uh, you know, just to, just to write a bestseller. No, that's not my point. He said, it's telling you uh, a story. It's telling you one story. And that's the secret of the Masnavi. Because our story is one. Your atheist friend, your Jewish friend, your Christian friend, your Muslim friends, your Hindu friends, your Buddhist friend, your Jain friend, all of them, we have one story. And the story is this. We came from a place. We are in a place. And we'll end up in a place. It's called the circle of life. We have to complete that. All of us, we're in it together. And there's no way anyone can go to a different day of judgment, a different place, no matter where you go, right? No matter where you go. Agar b'chash miravi sad hazar sal zeman ba'aqibat b'manawi ke muntahat manam. Rumi said in the Divan Shams, he says, it's a munajad, but the munajad is uh, when God's speaking. When God is saying to the servant, he said, oh, my servant, even if you become angry at me, even if you become an atheist, you say, I don't believe in you. You don't exist. Even if you distance yourself from me a million light years, as wicked as you can be, he said, oh, my servant, at the end, will come back to me because I am the end of your affairs. And there's no other place to go except stand in front of God. And this is what Rumi is trying to say, that we have one journey. We came from the same exact spot, Yawmul Alas, the day of affirmation. And then we come into this earth, we are in this planet earth together, and we're taking this journey together, and we're going to go to the same Lord, 
We're going to stand in front of him, all of us. So let's hold hands. Let's do it together because it's one journey. It's one story. It's called the story of the human being. And then he said, it complains from separations. And separation is plural because separations is the first one is when we came into the womb, like we just talked about. You're in the womb of your mother. You left the perfection of the of this this world beyond times and space and plates, but your soul was there and it came into the womb of the mother and then you know, start kicking and then you became alive. And Rumi said that the cry of the human being began not when you were born, right? Because the next song is about the cry. But he, he said that, so that's the first separation. And then he says, ever since they cut me from the reed bed, from this perfect world, brought me into this world of this tribulation and trial and pandemic and wars and all of that, right? When I was in the womb of my mother, I started my first cry. That's when we start crying. Said, what happened? Everything used to be perfect. Now I need the umbilical cord. I need, what is all this stuff? These means. I was living in a world without any means. It was just happening, right? Like paradise, everything just happens. You don't have to run to do something. You want food, it comes. You don't have to chew. It, you just enjoy it and it comes and you, and you digest it. So then you come to the world. He said, ever since I was cut from the reed bed, and that's when my first cry began. And then he says, and I'll end with this in this line. He said, Har kasi ku dur He said, whoever is separated from his own essence, and we all have an essence. Each, no matter what we believe in, is regardless of what you believe in, you have an essence, and that essence will not let you go to sleep. It will bother you. It will bother you until you submit to what we call the fitra, the state of purity of your heart. You, people can go and drink all they want, they, but they're going to they're gonna be sober. Once they're sober, it's going to bother them. People do drugs. Once they, the, the, the high is gone and they're back to normal, it's going to bother them. And you can't drug yourself and drink your, yourself your way out of life. You can't. And that's why people end up committing suicide because you have to connect with your heart. Because Rumi said, whoever is separated from their own essence, one day they will seek to return back to their own, to where they belong. It's like a runaway child goes on the streets, goes here, first he parties with his friend and then he ends up homeless on the street. And then he ends up on the drug. And then he's like, oh man, I miss my bed. I miss mommy. I miss them. We all miss our bed. We all miss that, that hand of providence that, 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 that we were in care of and we are in care of. We all miss our original home, which is paradise. Everyone misses that, no matter what you do. But what do we do? We numb ourselves with drugs, with alcohol, with, with sins, with disobedience. And this is the problem that Rumi said, trust me, if you connect with your heart, the heart is your guide. It is your light. And that light will guide you to the station. And the station is called the station of Ish, the station of love. And once you reach that station, love becomes your teacher. And from there, it will hold your hand and take you absolutely to a place beyond places and time beyond times. Well, on that note, I'd like to uh, just recite a few lines from that poem, the song of the reed. Now listen, listen to this reed flute's deep lament about the heartache being a part has meant since from the reed bed they uprooted me. My songs expressed each human's agony. A breast which separations split in two is what I seek to share this pain with you. When kept from their true origin, all yearn for union on the day we can return. Amongst the crowd, alone, I mourn my fate. 
Amongst the crowd alone, I mourn my fate with good and bad. I've learned to interrogate that we were friends, each one was satisfied, but none sought out my secrets from inside. My deepest secrets. In the song I wail, but eyes and ears can't penetrate this veil. So yeah, I mean, that's a few verses from uh, the beautiful work from uh, Javed Mujaddadi, shares your name, from the Oxford World uh, Classics. I have to mention uh, the, the book. I also like to thank the audience. They've been uh, amazing online all across the world. I've, uh, I've not had time to look at your, uh, too many of your comments and questions. Uh, the focus was on our beloved guests. I'd like to uh, also just uh, thank my beloved guests. Really, it was an honor. And, you know, I, I would like to take this opportunity publicly, uh, especially uh, Feridun, uh, dear teacher, uh, I really want to always stay in contact with, with you, mainly because of your love for Jalaluddin Urumi. Uh, you know, I, yeah, if, if, uh, yeah, if you can always uh, remain close to us and teach us and share with us your insights, uh, I'd appreciate that, inshallah. And as for uh, Jennifer, we, you know, we, we, uh, we celebrate your, your contribution to the Quran and uh, for what you're doing for the Quran with uh, the lady female reciters, all the female reciters around the world, we salute you and we celebrate you as well, inshallah. May Allah continue to, to raise you and all of you, inshallah. So with those few words, uh, I'd like to thank you both. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. You're welcome. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala.